Okay, so guys, we're going to get into the genesis of this thing. Some of you guys are going to be upset. But you know what? Here's the thing. The dope part about what I'm going to share with you guys is a lot of this, in my it's opinion, applicable. is scalable. It's like yeah. an almost anybody can do it. Okay, so let's take it to the genesis. NF signs with exist record. Shout out to Rapzilla. My man Chad's in the in the live stream. <laughs> NF signs with Rapzilla. Check out the original look. Okay. This, this is like 2013. This was, this was announced March 21st, 2012. Sounds about right. Okay, 2012. Now, who was on exist at the time? You had you had the truth, you had Ambassador, and a couple other artists. Okay. They announced this tour that they were all going on, the Amaze tour. Um and that was his initial thing. Now, now he had been signed a little bit before this. By the way, when somebody signs, it takes a little while for them to make the announcement. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's been signed for a little bit on Exist. We knew Exist was already kind of booming, and you had Ambassador and The Truth, who were flagship artists in Christian hip hop, who kind of needed to restructure and rebuild their careers. That's a whole mm -hmm. other video for a whole other conversation. And Christian hip hop was in a weird time. Yes, at, at that place. I mean, this was even this was pre. Reach Records Golden Era. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So he signs, okay, boom. This is what he started with. Now, after he signed, we we started hearing a little bit of his music, right? We started hearing a little bit of stuff. And then what was the most notable thing that everybody kind of acknowledged very early on? It sounds identical to Eminem. Okay. He sounded more to more like Eminem back then than he does now, I think. Right. If right? It, and we're specifically you I mean you can go back, you can listen to his moments album. The beats sound like they're from 2004. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they sound like they're B-sides from Encore or something. Yes. And, I mean, it's got that... He, he's imitating the diction, yes. you know, everything. Yes. And well, here was the deal. He was from Michigan. He yeah. was from the same area. So a lot of it is like they had very legitimate, common, yes. uh, you know, shared environmental pressures. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the same the same environment that shaped Eminem kind of shaped NF. Yep. Like legitimately. Yep. He's on Exist for a, a few years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really go anywhere. Nothing really sparks. Okay. Then he signs a deal with Capital Christian. Mm -hmm. He, I think, only put out one record on Exist. He mm -hmm. was signed to Exist for multiple records. Did he, did he even put out moments on Exist? I, I thought think, he did that independently. Did he? I think I'm not he. Sure. I think he did a single or something with them. He was on a compilation, okay. right? He put something he out with them. He did that record with Flame, I think. Yes. So he put something out with them. <laughs> you know, Flame hit the lottery with that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers probably went crazy. <laughs> post, post. Okay, so they put out that record. Now, he's still signed to exist. He ends up on Capitol. Mm -hmm. If an artist is signed to a label, because this was a real label with real investors, real money, real stuff happening, music videos, if an artist is signed to a label and then a major label wants to step in and sign that artist, Mowgli, what is usually going to happen in a situation like that? Generally, especially because Exist wasn't a major, mm -hmm. um, you're going to see that as a view of like, okay, well, the, the major label has the capital, <laughs> literally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they have the funds. So in this case, it's like, if you want this artist, well, here's what we value their contract to be. Mm -hmm. And you can pay that and you can have them, mm -hmm. is normally how it works. Mm -hmm. um, that's not always how it works. You know, sometimes people do just let people out of contracts. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Um, I've known it to happen to people, mm -hmm. um, but generally, no. Gen yes. Generally, it's it's a numbers game, and uh, Exist probably did invest something in them, mm -hmm. you know, and when they invest something that, that's a long-term play, they're hoping to see the results of that down the line, and obviously they didn't see that because mm -hmm. he didn't stay on the label, mm -hmm. so they're going to want to see compensation for that. In, in, in addition to the compensation for the speculation of what they assumed NF would be when you know, they first signed him. Mm -hmm. So Exist has a, a, a recording agreement with him. Capital has to buy him out of that agreement. Mm -hmm. okay. So then they they bring him over to Capital, and you instantly see the quality jump. Right. Right? Now you see... So go again, If those of you guys, those of you guys that are NF stands and you're really in your feelings right now, go and look at the NF before Capital. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm treading lightly because i know the person who signed him to capital personally like i talked talked to this guy multiple times we have each other's numbers like he's a really cool guy i know the guy personally look at the numbers look at the look at the quality look at the presentation cohesiveness cohesiveness top to bottom right boom the dude the dude goes to quality qual uh, uh capital quality jumps quality of, of everything jumps music videos and then something interesting happens I remember going onto Facebook one day, mm -hmm. and every day I would go on Facebook, 
these guys, I, I couldn't go anywhere on without Facebook seeing enough. without seeing enough. Right. They flooded every Christian rap fan. For me, with, it was YouTube. It was YouTube. Okay. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's a, it's a strategy that anybody can do, but mm -hmm. it's especially impactful if you have a lot of money you can put behind it. Yes. Um, so in this case, you know, they, they had it set up to where if you organically searched out an NF video, mm -hmm. they were just sending you NF. Mm -hmm. For like the first year after his his first uh, video, I can't remember the name of the track, but I remember the music video. The all intro, I have, right? all, all I have. have. Okay. And uh, you know he's just rapping in that that white room. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like if you looked at that video organically, they were gonna hit you fifty times, mm -hmm. recommending another. And I mean, realistically, a label spend in a situation like that, they can spend six figures mm -hmm. or more. Mm -hmm. You know, just on the marketing, not even the content production side mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And that's incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. It costs normally about a penny per viewer. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you did the math, if you, you want to hypothetically say there was a hundred thousand dollars spent, so what was that ten million? Uh, yeah, about that. Yeah, ten million. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So out the gate, he signs. The visuals jump quality. The they're also working him in the CCM world. He's popping up on all these festivals. Yeah, left they were right. they were putting him on worship tours, mm -hmm. and that that was not the move. That was not connecting at all. Mm -hmm. And I think this is that that's the next you know step in his story. Is I think they had to realize that that wasn't really working. And yep. this was around when they had the NFEP. Yes, you know before the Mansion album, it was just a five track EP. Yes. So so they so they have the the, the EP. They're working this EP. Facebook is flooded with everything NF. Mm -hmm. And by the way, why is this important? Why is it important? One. Guys, this is a like, really freaking tangible step if you're a business, if you want to launch a business, if you want to be an artist. Very, very, very simple, tangible step. All they had to do was say, if you are a fan of Lecrae, which was their motivation for signing it. Well, I don't think that was their motivation, to be honest. Okay. I, I think their motivation, I don't, and I don't think their target was Lecrae either. Okay. I think their target was Eminem. Well, it, let me let me get there. So yeah. so so one, I, I from speaking to mm -hmm. my friend, okay, they were inspired by what what Reach had accomplished. Okay, so gotcha. they saw what they had done, the numbers, and they were like, "Wow, there's this, room, this is viable. This is this room, right?" Because prior to that, it, nothing at Capital Christian had worked in the hip hop sense. Right. So they say, "Wow, this is viable." So all they had to do was this. When, when something becomes a flagship, when you have a Lecrae, it becomes easier to do Facebook marketing ads. What does that mean? If you like Lecrae. Mm -hmm. And Eminem, mm -hmm. you will see a video based on your interest. Yep. You will see an NF video. Yep. If you like Rapzilla and NF, mm -hmm. I mean, excuse me, Rapzilla and Eminem, you will see a NF video. Yep. This was nonstop because now there was already a predetermined micro tribe of artists of interest of communities that right and that intersection is very powerful because not huge. everybody that would just is an eminem fan which is you know how many millions of people yes not all of them are going to be into a christian artist yes like especially an eminem fan not going right. to be into a christian artist but at the same time not every lecrae fan is going to be into an nf right. but somebody that's into lecrae and, and NF. eminem is i mean it's gonna be eminem. Yeah, and is extremely likely extremely. And, and, I, and this is a strategy i've employed it myself We'll get there. You know, we'll get we'll get there because I want to give them some real tangible stuff to take away. Okay, so boom, they're flooding it on YouTube. They're flooding it on um, on uh, on on Facebook. This is before Instagram really kind of became the main staple, right? And you could do ads on Instagram. So this is like what 2015, 2016 ish, yep. right? 2015. 2015. So out the gate, you're talking about one. There's a now now we're talking budget for the, the production value, right? Mm -hmm. They spent a lot of money, on, lot of money. on some of those videos. They Which, have, if you're doing independently, it doesn't cost that much. Yes. I mean, we're talking maybe, you could do, do the same thing for maybe 5% of the budget yep. of what they were spending. Yep. So, and then factor in that they have the resources to spend, I don't know, let's just call it six figures. Right. Right, to just making sure that anybody in the freaking stratosphere in specific cities who likes these two artists is going to see this visual and the odds are if you like Lecrae and you're a Christian rap fan and you like Eminem, you're probably going to like NF. And this is also a working formula from a decade prior with the success of KJ52 who mm -hmm. wasn't signed to Capitol but was also a Christian version of uh, Eminem. Right. Dear Slim. Dear Slim. Now, let's, let's take it to step two. Then all of a sudden, somehow in this timeline, he signs a management agreement with Chris Walton. Chris Walton is the manager for the pop rock group 21 Pilots. 
okay, founder of Element One, okay, they were the hottest rock band of 2016, 21 Pilots, Chris Wallen. So that that is a huge piece in this story. Huge piece. That you go from, you go from being a Christian artist in the Christian world, touring Christian festivals, touring Christian, um, not how, connecting. Yeah, not not, not touring with King, for King and Country, <laughs> you know, yep. Capital Kings. Yep. And then your manager is the same manager for 21 Pilots, right? Who were going bananas at the time. Who were the, I mean, it says they were the hottest rock band of 2016. Yeah. And this is right in the middle of this. This is 2015, mm -hmm. 2016. So you have the budget for ads. You, well, first of all, you have a machine that's a real label with like real capital, mm -hmm. pun intended. <laughs> you have the, the budget to make the visuals better. You have the budget to make, to, to spend a ton on ads. YouTube ads, Facebook ads, and then the last piece in the in the puzzle becomes Chris Walton, manager of Twenty One Pilots, founder of Element One. And soon after, Caroline came came into the picture from there as well. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not sure when that happened. I've heard it mixed was, things it, about yeah. it. Yeah, they started putting that on the the thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. The um, I think Caroline label. came into it with his second studio album, if I, if I remember. I after Mansion. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I I don't want to speak on right. what. I don't want to speak on what I shouldn't speak on publicly. Right. right? So, but, but but what we do know publicly is that he did end up on Caroline, and Car what for people that don't know, Caroline is like a management subsection of Capitol Records. Mm -hmm. So, and this is really important, especially for artists that are weighing a record deal, because a, a mistake that a lot of people do is that they see a giant corporation stamp something on it, mm -hmm. and then they think that oh. If I sign with this giant corporation, I'm going to have access with the same team. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Yep. Because it, the music business comes down to key players, key individuals, mm -hmm. key movers. And in this case, like this guy, Chris Waltman, like, it's this guy. It's just this one guy. It's not a management firm. It's one dude. Mm -hmm. And when there's a, when, when there's a manager uh, or a specific A&R, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's one dude that has influence in one niche. Yep. And that niche is right for one artist. Right. So if you sign to the same label under the same corporation or the same umbrella, it doesn't mean you can get anything close to a similar experience. Right. Right. So I think that that's a that's a huge part. Ca Caroline is so instrumental yep. in his his tale of capital as well. Yeah. So Carol, so 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 you go from you go from exist, then you go to Capital Christian. Now you got budgets. Now you mm -hmm. got marketing dollars. And then you go to Chris Walton, mm -hmm. and now you got Caroline, which is also who distributes Migos and quality mm -hmm. control and yep. so on and so forth. And at, at that point, his tour was starting to pick up as well. Mm -hmm. He was starting to drive the hard tickets. The YouTube ads were doing work. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I think after the first album, he was already up to like 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yep. And YouTube is extremely valuable because when you get when you get tapped into YouTube, that's mm -hmm. like to me, I still think that that's one of the most valuable communities Absolutely. to be to be a part of. I mean, Absolutely. YouTube is TV.